Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to take a look at the PV Radio Pro 1000 snare drum. So these drums are from the 1990s, and uh, I did a very extensive video and then a follow-up on these drums a while back, so you might want to look that up. I'll put the links in the description of the video. So uh, this is a very, very interesting, and it's a, un a unique drum. It looks like somewhat of a cross between a giant pipe flange or a commode and a spaceship. Uh, these drums were very well known back in the day and sometimes laughed at because they looked so ridiculous. But the sound was and is incredible. Uh, you've heard me play the drum set many times on this channel. I love the sound of those drums. And the kick drum, especially the 22 inch drum, is the best kick drum I've ever played on. And I use it uh, for all my recordings when I record any kind of rock or pop music. So they're really useful. They do have drawbacks, obviously. They're very large. They don't fit in conventional size cases because of the way the drums are made with that radial bridge. Uh, they're hard to place because of that as well. And they are heavy. The snare drum is a little bit different than the rest of the drums, so we'll show you that today. I've not done that yet. This uh, is a drum I recently picked up, and it's a gloss black finish in pretty much mint condition. Now you'll notice it has two strainers, and I'm going to take this camera off of here and show you close up. The strainers are pretty inexpensive and cheap, but it's got two of them, which is interesting and one on each side. Now the benefit of that is you can have one on and have tension and then turn the other on and have even more tension. So I'll usually just use one loose for a looser sound and then put the other one on if I need it to get it tighter. So uh, for this drum I use thin heads like a diplomat which is a very thin head. So for you heavy hitters out there uh, they may, that may not work for a whole gig but when I'm using it for a session I um, I have plenty of these heads, so it's not a problem. I just pop a new one on uh, if I need to change it even during the session. But the thinner heads on this drum do sound good. So I'm going to take this off and show you the inside of the drum. Now this drum is built out of separate pieces of wood, as you see there. And it's not stav. It's basically kind of laminated together. And it's very round and beautifully made and obviously glued and then sanded and then it's a 45 degree um, edge here, bearing edge. Now you'll notice there's not a lot of hardware connected, the only thing is the strainer so you won't see any holes in the drum other than that because of the nature of this radial bridge which is here. So the drum basically floats more or less now this drum, as you'll see in a minute, and you saw already in my intro, has an incredible crack to it. And it's pretty heavy, I'd say about maybe 10 to 15 pounds. So it's got some weight to it. Snares are nothing special, cheap. And uh, I've used these drums, I have a couple of these snare drums, with different snares, but these are fine for today. And I have, on this drum, I have the original PV I'll turn it around here for you. Original PV head. They were aquarium heads that came with it. Uh, one thing about this snare drum, turn this off, is that it doesn't work great uh, at all tunings. So it sounds better to me at a high tuning. So I usually crank it up and I'll use it for a lot of funk drumming, things like that. So it's not as versatile as the rest of the kit, but they are definitely special, and they do sound great if you have a tune right. And once again, you want to use the thin heads. Now it's an eight lug drum. The rims are nothing special, just just regular old lightweight rims, not die cast or anything like that. So, so we'll go over to the drum kit and play it. And I just wanted to show you sort of a close up of it. We'll hold it up here. It's kind of beautiful in a sort of ugly way. <laughs> and I know a lot of people um, make uh, comments about these drums, how ugly they are and all that. You know, I'm not interested in, in that at all. Uh, they sound great. That's really what I care about. And they record great. 
So let's give a listen. So as you see there, this drum's got some pop, and it's one of the few snares I have it's, that sounds like you're doing a rim shot when you're actually not. So that's dead center on the node of the drum, the tightest part of the head, and this is the rim shot. So just a bit more ring. Now I do have the drum muffled a little with this little piece of leather, so when I take that off, It's a beautiful sounding and feeling drum. Now, once again, like I said before, I have it tuned up really tight. I think that's the best tuning for this drum. Lower tunings, it sort of doesn't have a lot of character, but this is kind of a one-shot drum, really. You just tune it up as high as it'll go, and it sounds great. Now, as far as the dual strainers go, uh, right now I just have the one on, so when it's off, So you might have heard a little bit of a residual snare there. That's just the other strainer. So you have to kind of do a little bit of a balancing act. And when you try to balance them out, it gets tricky. So what I'll normally do is I'll just put one strainer on, and then I'll use the other knob, just like a normal, you know, butt plate, to tighten that without turning the other strainer on, okay? And if you have them both on, you get more tension up. If you have it off, either one, either side will give you that tom sound. That's handy, I guess, if you want to change with your right or left. But normally I'm so used to doing it with my left hand because I keep my strainer on the left-hand side that that's just not an uh, option for me. So you can try to mess around with that, but normally I'll, I'll usually just have one of them on and um, or both of them on, but again, I'm using the knob to do the tension, not the actual strainer. Now, I'll show you what happens when we have them both activated. It gets really tight here, so 
sounds like this. Almost sort of a little bit of a marching drum there. And you might want that sound, you know, so. But for me, I, I like a little bit of a looser sound. So then we could just turn that off and then it'll be really low. And that's not bad for a sort of a old style jazz sound, so. So that works for that, and it's great, obviously, for closed rolls when you have it that loose. So in that case, once again, what I'll do is just bring up the other side, which it's off, okay, now, so. And I'll just get that where I like it. So you can easily get into no man's land with that, trying to do that balancing act. A much better solution is the DW, uh, now five point position butt plate where you can actually have a, you know, a staying power there as far as uh, whichever setting you have it, one through five. The old one was one through three, but the new one's even better. I definitely recommend that. But this is sort of hit and miss. So uh, either muffled or not, the drum feels good. It's got a very fast response. Uh, it's, it's kind of extremely loud, so you don't have to work real hard. Like, I'm not even playing hard at all, I'm just dropping my hand, basically. It's got a nice big sound, all right? But when you muffle it, it's going to be a little bit softer. So normally, I'll leave that off. The drum is kind of dry to begin with. There's a little bit of that ring. Uh, as far as residual snare sound, not too bad for the toms. Once again, sympathetic vibrations always depend on your initial tuning, and for this... Now normally, if you watch this channel, you know that I tune my, my snare drum, especially one like this, that's more or less a 5-inch drum, but if you measure it from top to bottom, it'll be 6, but just the way the shell is only 5 inches. Uh, I'll tune it to like an A. But this drum, I'm way up there. It's like a B, almost, so. And I've experimented a lot. That's the best tuning for me with a thin head like a diplomat. If you use an emperor or even an ambassador, which is a little bit thicker than a diplomat, but thinner than an emperor, uh, you can maybe go a little bit lower, but again, you lose some of that sensitivity, which is important because I, you know, sometimes I play quiet, so I want that. Uh, I don't like thick heads at all. I want that sensitivity. So I uh, hope you enjoyed looking at this drum. It's sort of a rarity, but you can find them used. I see them all the time on Reverb or eBay or uh, even I've seen a few on Craigslist uh, if, if you ever go on there. So you can find them. There were a lot of them made. Uh, they're great little drums. It is not a drum to use for all kinds of music. It's a very much a specialty drum, just like the drum set. It's not a jazz drum set at all. It's a rock and roll drum set, uh, which sounds amazing for that style of music. But I wouldn't take this on a jazz gig, ever, uh, and I never have. But for the recording I do that's in the pop, rock, funk vein, this thing is amazing. And the snare works well there.
So I'll play a little and we'll see you soon. <laughs> 